Welcome guys, my name is Brody Butler and in this Photoshop tutorial we're going to look at extracting people from an image so we can place them on a different background but we're going to look at difficult areas, areas such as hair and I'm going to show you how we can do it easily in CS5 with the new features that CS5 offers us. Here we have this image that we looked at last week. Um, you can see last week's uh, tutorial on my blog at brodybutler.com we looked at it doing this extraction in CS4 or earlier versions of Photoshop where we'd have to use uh, the channels um, to make a selection. But in CS5, it's much, much easier. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is just grab my quick selection tool. Um, you can use that by hitting W on the keyboard. And if I just click and drag that on the background, with very little effort, I can make a selection of this background. And that's done a pretty good job. It took me no effort at all. You'll see down here on, on the shoulder on the left here, it's grabbed a little bit of her arm. So to remove that, what I can do is hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on PC, and you'll see the brush turn to a minus sign in the middle. It usually has a plus symbol, but if I hold down the Option Alt key, it will change to a minus, and I can just paint out that selection there and get rid of it. Because I don't want to select any of her body. And that looks that's looking pretty good, but with her hair, See so all these areas of transition here, we don't want to select. Now the areas of transition is where the hair starts to go soft and where it starts breaking up and we can see the background through it. All those areas we don't want to select. Um, a good way to think of it is less is more. The less hair you select, the better it's going to be. So in order to fine tune this, I'm actually going to change to a mask. So if I hit the Q key on the keyboard, that will change me to quick mask mode. And now using my brush tool, hit the B on the, B on the keyboard, and painting with white, I can now paint away this brush. It's just a lot more accurate and easier to do than mucking around with the quick selection tool. Um, so I just want to paint in all these areas where you can sort of see the background through the hair, and obviously any areas where there's any fine hairs sort of wandering out, out on, the, on the edge here. So I'm just going to paint all this so we don't have any of those transition areas in our selection. Let's go through and quickly paint through that. And if you can't see through the red and you're not sure, just hit the Q on the keyboard and it'll take you back to your selection. So there I've just got a little bit more to go. It's down here. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Because what, what's going to happen is we're going to let Photoshop do the hard work for us in these transition areas. So in a tool that I'm going to show you in a second, I'm going to let Photoshop go and tackle those edges for us and do all the hard work. So I'm finished with my mask. I can hit Q again now and go back to my selection. Now what I want to do with this, whoops, just one, one quick extra little bit there. What I'm going to do now is turn that into a proper mask, not just a quick mask, an actual mask. And I can go to my mask panel over here. If you don't have that, you can go to your window menu and click on masks and this will pop up. And in this menu we have a little plus icon here, that's to add, add a layer mask. So I'm going to click that. And you can see in my layers panel over here, that's added the mask that we had selected. But you can see our image, our model has gone. We've got it the wrong way around. So what I need to do is invert that mask. Again, in my mask panel over here, we now have an invert button. So I'm just going to click that, and that'll automatically invert the mask for me. And now that's revealed the background below, which is what I want, obviously, to show um, behind my model instead of that orangey background. So here we have our model extracted, but now we need to go and concentrate on these areas with the hair so we can get every little fine hair um, strand of hair. So what I'm going to do is click the mask edge button here and this is where the new features in Photoshop appear. This is the, this is a, this is the refine mask dialog. Uh, we had this in CS4 but in CS4 we were limited to just some of these adjust edge features. Um, there might have been a couple of others um, I forget but there's some new features here. We have the output dialog down the bottom here and I think these view features are, are different as well. Are new sorry. So first of all um, we can change our view if we like. We can change it to um, have our image on a black background, on a white background. 
Uh, we can have it black and white, basically showing you what the mask is. And that can be really good when you're trying to fine tune your mask. Um, but I like just this one, which shows what our resulting image will look like. Now from here, we need to look at increasing the radius around our hair. Now we can do that by using the radius slider here and increasing it. But what that's going to do is that can, that's going to increase the radius at which Photoshop does its own edge detection around the whole image. So if I go ahead and click the show radius checkbox up here, you can see this radius here is the same size all the way around, but we don't want that. We obviously want it to stay nice and small around these hard edges of her skin, but around the hair we want it to be a lot bigger. So this is no good. You can try using the smart radius for some images if the hair on the model is not very big. Um, and Photoshop does a fairly good job of um, managing the radius. So you can see here it's a bit thicker around the hair and it's a lot smaller around the skin. But in our case, that's still not going to be good enough. We need to go in and do it manually. So I'm just going to turn off the radius there, turn off smart radius and restore that to zero. Now, here's the real magic in Photoshop CS5. This tool over here, we click on that and we select the Refine Radius tool. Now, this is where all the magic happens. This is, this is really cool. Now, what, with this tool, all we need to do is paint in the areas of transition that we want. So, basically, we're just going to paint in these bits of hair that are missing from the image and Photoshop is going to take care of all the hard work for us and it's going to remove the rest of that background. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish painting in all these extra hairs that, uh, that we missed the first time around. You don't want to go too far into the image that's already there. You only want to select outside. Selecting all the hairs that you can't currently see. So I've selected all the hairs there. So we've, that's basically our transition area that we want Photoshop to go in and detect and extract the background for us. So if I release my pen now or the mouse button if you're using a mouse, well, automatically Photoshop has just gone and taken away that background through all the, and you can see all the fine um, strands of hair are still there. It's done a, a remarkable job of extracting all that. So it does all the hard work for you. That was, that was really easy, really, really simple. So now that we've extracted all the background, you'll notice that the hair is still contaminated with a little bit of that background color that we had before, that sort of orangey red color. Now in previous versions of Photoshop, we could do a hue saturation adjustment and use a mask and there's various other ways you can do it. But in CS5, if we stay in our refine mask dialog here, we have this decontaminate colors option. And if I check that, that will automatically remove that color cast that we had around our hair. I'll just do it before and after on that. I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see this. And that's, so that's before, you can still see the red around the top there and on the sides and uh, in the bottom right here, you can see it in between the hair. Now I wanna go ahead and click this checkbox again and that's the after. You can see all that color tinge has now gone. And if you had a lot of color contamination there from the background, you have this slider here where you can boost that up and that will obviously target it more um, and do a better job of removing all that color. So you have a bit of control there. And I'm gonna set the output to a new layer with layer masks. That's gonna create a completely new layer for me. Click OK. And now up here in my layers panel, I have a brand new layer, which is all the, all the hard work that we've just done and there's our resulting image. Really, really simple. Once you get the hang of that, it'll only take you a couple of minutes, if that, to make a really clean, good extraction with complicated hair, um, if you're using Photoshop CS5. So I hope you learned something from that, guys. Uh, check out my blog, brodybutler.com, for more Photoshop tutorials. And uh, I've, I'm happy to hear your comments and tips that you might have as well. Cheers.